Praise the Lord. God bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. My name is Minister Red. I'm the pastor here at Christ Our Life Ministries, located in Augusta, Georgia, on 308 Rose Street, directly behind the Walmart. Those on Bobby Jones Expressway, Interstate 520, heading west. I want to thank you for joining me for this great Monday night service. Amen. I didn't have service last Thursday night because I was in North Carolina, and I always say, if I miss a service, I'm coming back on Monday night to make up for that missed service because I take God's business serious. Hallelujah. And it is my calling as a pastor to feed you twice a week and twice a week you will be fed. Hallelujah. Christ, our life ministries. Thank you for joining me, along with my members, Brother Roland and his beautiful wife, Sister Brittany Peachy, Sister Selena, and her beautiful husband, Stan, my brother, Minister Harvey Cole, and his beautiful wife, Sister Kimberly, my right-hand man, right-hand man, Deacon Nate Daniel Stevenson, and his beautiful wife, Linda, my homegirl from North Carolina. Yes, I am from North Carolina. My homegirl, Sister Tanisha Pratt. We are Christ Our Life Ministries, and we welcome you into this program. Hallelujah. Want to continue to remember our members that have gone on to be with the Lord. Amen. Pillars of this ministry that I will never, ever forget as long as there's the breath of life in my body. Hallelujah. I will never have a service here in this, and they not be mentioned. Sister Beverly Conyers Evans. We love you. We miss you. Her husband, Brother Harry Evan. We love you. We miss you. Sister Beverly left us March the 4th, 2022. And Brother Harry left us April the 8th, 2024. I love them. I miss them. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for joining my sister church. Amen. Spirit of Liberty's ministries pastored by the phenomenal, outstanding anointed man of God, Minister Kenya King, and his beautiful wife, Sister Donna King. Join them every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. I'll be with Pastor King tomorrow night at 7 p.m. You ought to join us. My right-hand man, Deacon Nathaniel Stevenson. My right-hand man, I love you. Thank you for joining me tonight for part two. Part two, amen. Hallelujah, the name of Jesus. I am on YouTube. I am on YouTube, amen. You can listen to over 450 messages. I have four over 450 highly anointed messages on my YouTube channel. Per chance, if today be the last day I breathe on planet Earth, I have left y'all some highly anointed messages to get you ready to meet Christ in person hallelujah to meet the one that we're supposed to be abiding on the inside of these messages will prepare you to meet him so that when you meet him rather than him saying depart from me i never knew you he will say well done thou good and faithful servant enter into the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe that. That is how much I believe in my messages and in my relationship with God's one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Whether you believe me or not, whether you believe anything I say has no bearing on who I know called me into the gospel ministry. Hallelujah. Part two, Deacon Stevenson. Part two. The reason why you, yeah, you and I, your pastor, as believers, lose the spiritual battles in our daily lives. Because I always like to identify with my audience because I don't want y'all to think Pastor Red got it together. No, Pastor Red ain't got it together. But did you know if we would get on one accord, we can all get it together together? We can get it together together. Getting it together together is called fellowship. 
hallelujah, friendly relations with one another under the blood-stained banner of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The reason why you, yeah, you and I, as believers, lose the spiritual battles in our daily lives, part two. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, 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 Dick and Stephen, I'll be writing them letters, too. I'll be writing them letters, too. And Dick and Stephen, I, I didn't want to jump ahead of the word letters, but tonight I got the, the, the definition of it the way I really want us to understand it tonight, amen. Letters. So, Dick and Stevenson, so on part one, the definition of the word letters was a form of communication between two parties. Tonight, I'm going to give it to you the way God gave it to me. Letters. Thoughts living on a person's mind. Thoughts living on a person's mind. Something you can keep looking at over and over again. That's what letters is. Hey man, I got this letter from the VA. I can keep looking at this letter over and over again. I can keep, either I can shred it up and throw it away. It's, it's, it, it depends on what I want to do with it. And so we got these letters. Thoughts living on a person's mind that they keep looking at over and over again when it comes to spiritual warfare that we should not be looking at. Hallelujah. Foundation of verse 2, amen, Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 reads on this wise who also have made us able ministers of the New Testament. God bless you, Sister Tanisha Pratt. I love you. Part two's ready for us. Part two's ready. God has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, not of the letter. Why, 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 didn't, why did God not make us able ministers of the letter? Because we keep looking at it over and over again. And if you're looking at something, that means you ain't moving. You ain't moving. You just know God want us moving. God don't want us stopping and looking. If anything wants us looking unto the hills from whence cometh our help. But while we're looking at these hills, we should be walking towards it in the name of Jesus. Until God tells you to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, you should be moving and not standing still, amen, uh, dealing with thoughts living on your mind. Hallelujah. Thoughts living on your mind in the name of Jesus. Something you can keep looking at over and over again. I want to know how many times you, you looked at something today that you were supposed to then gave to God that you're still looking at. You can't, once you give God some, you shouldn't be able to see that no more. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Y'all trying to get me fired up before I even say my prayer. God bless you, Sister Erica Holloman. Your pastor love you. Thank you for joining me this Monday night. The reason why you, yeah, you and I as believers lose the spiritual battles in our daily lives. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we love you. And God, I want to thank you for Everybody that's going to join tonight's telecast because they are looking for a word. They're looking for a word that will enable them to win the spiritual battle that they're facing in this world that Satan is the God of. Oh, God, we love you. And God, we can't use past weaponry against the enemy that comes to us in thought form because he already knows the weapon that we're going to use. So we need a new word. We need a new word to fight him with. We need new rhema. We need new revelation knowledge. God, and we thank you tonight for giving it to us. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. The reason why you, yeah, you, mm -hmm, yeah, you and Pastor Red. And Pastor Red, 
as born again believers lose the spiritual battles in our daily lives. Let us go into part two. Let us go into it. Amen. God's true believers, God's true believers, the ones who really, really love Jesus Christ, but can't figure out why they struggle so much with spiritual battles actually know the answer we know the answer we know the answer but but we won't forget them things that are behind we know the answer but we refuse to look at but refuse to look at themselves see you got to look at yourself you got to look at yourself see see but refuse to look at themselves so they go through life they go through life doing everything to better themselves they go through that. All they do is lean to their own understanding. You know what? You, you know what it means to lean to your own understanding. You 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 got too many letters. You got too many letters. Thoughts living on a person's mind. You got too many letters. You need to get rid. You need to you need to ball up the letters. You need to ball up the letters and start living by the spirit because the letter kill it, but the spirit gives life. You, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. You know, you know how much you lean to your own understanding, and the and the harder you lean, the further you lean, the longer you lean, the more you gonna wear it. Hallelujah. Prayerfully, prayerfully, one day, prayerfully, one day. They will come to know for themselves that only by the cross of Christ can this victory be achieved. But we're not getting it. We, we, I'm tell, I mean, I mean, how many times we got to know that, that, that it is the doggone cross that's going to get us the victory? God bless it, Brother Scatlip. I love you, my friend. How many times do we need to have a message? Do we have to hear a message about the cross of Christ? Giving us the victory before we get it. But we ain't getting it. We're not getting it. Still living. We're still living too much by self-activation from the letters living on our mind. The thoughts living on our mind. We ain't getting it. Still living too much by self-activation because the letters that we keep receiving Every day sent overnight express. Watch this right here. We keep receiving these letters sent every day overnight express from the devil to the old man. Oh, I'm going to make y'all right tonight. What, what, is, what is overnight express? Some, somebody write, somebody write in, in the comment box what, what, what y'all think overnight express is. Because, because our self-activation Every time the sin, the Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth ain't in us. So every time sin causes self-activation to take place in us, we keep receiving these letters every day sent overnight from the devil to the old man. What, what, is, what is overnight express? What is overnight express? Somebody know what, don't act like y'all ain't never used it before. Somebody knows what Overnight Express is besides Pastor Red. So what is Overnight Express? What is it? And, 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 why do, and why do people use it? Why do people use Overnight Express? Why do they use it? I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all the answer if somebody don't write something. If somebody don't write, I'm going to tell y'all the answer in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Overnight Express. Overnight Express is something, something that you want the next day. That's what that's all Overnight Express is. But the key word here, oh yeah, oh yeah, Sister Erica Holloman, to get things in the hurry, Sister Tanisha, when something is sent quickly to arrive by the next day, Deacon Stevenson, to get the letter sooner. Oh, come on now. Every last one of you was right. That's right. Overnight Express. The key word here is overnight. Overnight. 
you don't want night in there. You don't want night in there. Hallelujah. We still live too much by self-activation because of letters we keep receiving every day sent overnight from the devil to the old man. How here it is, Genesis 1 and 5. And the evening and the morning were the first day. The old man wants to make sure you get his letter the first thing in the morning. He wants to make sure when you get up, he wants to make sure that you that he put these thoughts in your head to make you wary, to make you to, to, to drive you crazy. He wants to make sure you get his letter the first thing in the morning. What letter? What letter? That no patience letter. He wants to make sure you get that no patience letter. Do y'all know what the fourth is? Nine aspects of the spirit. The fourth aspect of the spirit is patience. Love, joy, peace, patience. The, the old man wants to make sure that you get his no patience letter the first thing in the morning. Because that no patience letter, because that no patience letter, because if you have no patience, then you have no faith. See, the enemy, Satan needs to make sure that the first thing you do when you get up in the morning, he needs to make sure that your old man is walking by these thoughts living on your mind rather than on what God says he going to do for you in your life. Oh, yeah, Satan can only work in the darkness. He has no power in the light of day. That's why he has to send that thing every night by overnight express. Can't wait. I'm going to tell you, the enemy can't wait for you to wake up in the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says God's mercies are new every morning. His compassion spell new every morning. And y'all wake up every morning answering some overnight express mail from the devil that he's given to your old man that's been writing thoughts on your mind concerning something that you should have given to God that you love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The reason why you and I are still losing spiritual battles is because in our daily lives is because of the old man. The reason we're still losing spiritual battles in our daily lives is because of the old man who according to the gospel of 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 should have passed away. He should be dead. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Hallelujah. The old, all them old letters all them old thoughts that was living on your mind, that was taking your patience away, hallelujah, should be gone, should be dead. The old man should be dead. See, as long as the old man is alive, the old man is going to live by the letter. The old man is, 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 is bound. The, the old man is, is, is slave to the letter. Paul says, I'm carnal, sold under sin, sold under the letter of disobedience. Sold under the letter of worrying all the time. Sold under the letter, the letter of complaining all the time. Sold under the letter of never being able to make wise decisions all the time. That, that, he should have passed away. He should have passed away in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The old man. Here it is. The old man will not and has never been victorious in any Spiritual battles. The devil knows this. The devil knows this. He, 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 he knows that the every last one of us was in Adam and Eve. And he knows that they did not defeat him in the garden. He knows that we have an old man that must be nailed to the cross. Because the old man will not and has never been victorious in any spiritual battles. The devil knows this. 
So he puts great pressure. What's the definition of the word great? An amount well above average or above the normal. I mean, he puts great pressure. He puts great pressure on us. What, 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 I mean, how does, how does he put the great pressure on us? Thoughts living on a person's mind. He, he, he writes us, he don't write us one page. We don't wake up with one page letters on our mind. We wake up with serious, heavy letters because we don't see movement. The devil knows this, so he puts great pressure on the mind of the old man, which then causes us to want to see immediate deliverance, immediate answers to prayer, and when we don't see it, we start writing letters through the old man called thoughts. We start writing letters through the old man, through the old man's thoughts. Oh, we start writing letters through the old man's thoughts. We start writing letters to ourselves. We start writing letters to ourselves. When it's something you can keep looking at over and over again, something you keep thinking about over and over again, something you keep leaning to over and over again. Because of the pressure that Satan puts on the old man's mind, which causes us to want to see immediate deliverance, immediate answers to prayer. Hallelujah. The old man wants it right now. The old man wants it right now. He wants right now answers. The old man always wants right now answers, but faith is the answer. Faith is the answer. Hebrew, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, Hebrews 10 verse 38, Romans 1 and 7, three times the, the Bible says the just shall live by his faith. God bless you, sister Nita, I love you. I'm talking about, we talking about, we talking about, I'm, I'm talking about the next doggone time you, a, a situation you're facing causes you to worry, and if you spend time worrying about it, that means that somebody been writing a letter, and it was you doing the writing. Satan caused you to write yourself a letter, and then he gave you the doggone stamp to put on the envelope to mail it to yourself. The old man wants right now answers. The old man wants right now answers. But faith, faith is the answer. Jesus told them blind men, he, they said, Lord, that we might receive our sight. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 8, 9, verse 29, Jesus says, according to your faith, not according to your thoughts, not according to your thoughts, according to your faith, be it unto you. You know, you know why, you, you know why, you know why you're not getting right now answers. You know why you're not getting right now answers? Because you lack the patience to wait on God to do what he said he was going to do. And if that be the case, I'm trying to figure out why in the world y'all chose to be on the Lord's side. Why did, why, why, why have y'all chosen Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of your life if you're not going to put total confidence in him, in the fact that he is doing, that he's going to do what he said he was going to do. God is not a man that he should lie. Shall he, shall he not say it and shall he not do it? Come on now. Sister Anita, in order to write letters, in order to write letters, a person has to utilize their thoughts. And anyone motivated, motivated by their thoughts has fallen into Satan's plan. Whenever you're motivated by thoughts, because if the Bible going to tell us as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. If the Bible going to say, if we walk in the Spirit, let us also live in the Spirit. So what in the world are you doing being motivated 
my thoughts that God keeps saying. Your thoughts are not my thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Every time you write a letter, every time you write something that you can keep looking at over and over again, every time you write thoughts that are living on your mind, you are falling into Satan's plan. And this is his favorite one. Watch this right there. This is Satan. This is Satan's favorite plan. He, he makes us think that, that, that saying great words is going to help somebody out. Mm -mm. Saying, no, no, saying, saying, saying words, saying words that are not the words of Christ are not great words. This, this is Satan's favorite one right here. This one, and and, and y'all be saying this. I know y'all be saying this. It says, one small, one small positive thought in the morning can change your entire day. No, 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 it can't. No, it can't. See, that, that's, this is where this mess has got to break, break y'all. This is where you got to allow this message to break you. Because this is, this is Satan's favorite one right here. One small positive thought in the morning. But no, no, because you because we don't we don't have positive thoughts. We don't have positive. You either got the word of God or you got evil thoughts. Them is, them is the only two it is. He, he, he'll have us saying one small positive thought in the morning. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. In the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the morning. You're going to hear my voice. You're not going to hear no positive thought. You're going to hear my voice in the name of Jesus. One small positive thought in the morning can change your entire day. Uh, no, 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 it can't because only the word of God can change your entire day. Because whenever you say morning and whenever you say day, you're talking about God time. And ain't no thoughts allowed in God's morning and in God's day on the spiritual living. Why? Why is this? Because Satan knows, because Satan knows, Brother Ray Ware, Satan knows the same thing about our thoughts that God knows. Satan knows the same thing about our thoughts that God knows, that they are evil. Now, now if, now, if, now, if we had a small positive thought that we could say in the morning that could change our entire day, then God would have told us that. But God didn't tell us that. God told us in Genesis 6 and 5, it says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was on the evil continue. It does not say nothing about positive thoughts. It says every thought was on the evil continually. So how are you going to run around here and say that every one small positive thought in the morning can change you and die? Today? That's the devil tricking you. The Bible says that the devil portrays himself as an angel of light. See, he make us, he make us, he make us stay in the thought realm. He make us stay in the thought realm. You, I mean, you, you ain't got no, there's no such thing as a positive thought. Jesus says, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly, not through thought realm, through speaking the word of God. Satan knows the same thing about our thoughts that God knows, that they are evil. So Satan motivates the old man through lies to trust thoughts because he knows we don't have positive thoughts. Satan knows we don't have positive I don't care how much you, you can say you got a positive thought, that is a lie from hell. You do not have a positive thought because if you say you got a positive thought, then you telling God in Genesis 6 and 5 that he's a liar. You do not have positive thoughts. We're going to break that today. We're going we're gonna to break. We're going to break that today. You have zero. You either have the word of God or you have evil communication that corrupt good morals coming out of your mouth. Because when you think you have positive thoughts, 
That, that's what the enemy, the enemy wants you to be independent of God. Oh yeah, no good thing dwells in the flesh. That's right, Sister Nita. No good thing dwells in the flesh. And the only thing the flesh possesses is thoughts. It's all it possesses. That's why Jesus says, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profits nothing. But the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah. So Satan motivates the old man. He motivates the old man through lies to trust thoughts because he knows we don't have positive thoughts. Jesus Christ said, if you abide in me, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, not thoughts. Mm -mm, no, 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 no. You will, I'm you will find nowhere in the 66 books of the Bible, in the Genesis of Malachi 27, in the name of Jesus, in 30, I mean 39, 39, Genesis to Malachi, 39 Old Testament books, Matthew to Revelation 27, in the name of the 66 books of the Bible. You will find nowhere that God told us to abide in thoughts. So if God ain't, if, if God is not telling us to abide in thoughts, then why would you say that thoughts are positive? Because they're not. You either live in the word of God, you either abiding in the word of God, you're either speaking word of God, or you're speaking old man dialect thinking that you are good you, you're just like you're just like that 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 pharisee that went and, and, and said lord I, I thank you that i'm not like this publican i i fast three times a, I, I fast three times a day i i, I pay my tithes in the name of jesus hallelujah jesus says he didn't go down to his house justified but he had all these good he had all these positive thoughts to say about himself because he was selfish and didn't realize that he was in need of a savior. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. But you know why you ain't asking? You know why you ain't asking? You know why you ain't asking? Because you, because you too busy. You too busy writing doggone letters every day. You too busy writing letters because every morning you wake up, you got an overnight express email in your mind from the devil to jumpstart your old man every morning. The reason you and I are still losing spiritual battles in our daily lives is because we are thinking with the old man. We do too much old thinking with our old man instead of abiding in Christ, the new man. We ain't doing no abiding in Christ because if you're abiding in Christ, you will never operate in the thought realm. You'll only operate in the spiritual realm. And when you operate in the spiritual realm, you, you and God is operating together as one and the devil don't stand a chance. The devil don't stand a chance. Here we go, Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1 through 2. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1 through 2. Overnight express. Hallelujah. Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer. What is a censer? A censer is a vessel used for burning incense before the Lord. A vessel used for burning incense. What is incense? Aroma arising that symbolizes a person's prayer and devotion to God in the name of Jesus. Nadab and Abihu took either of them his censer. This wasn't the first time they did this. Hallelujah. But for some unknown reason, Sister Anita, some unknown reason, oh, they got an overnight express letter from the devil telling them you ought to be real quick when you go into into the temp, into the into the tent today you ought to go in now you ought to be hasty with your business you ought to go in now you ought to be fast 
get out of there so you can go play, uh, so you can go watch a movie, uh, so you can go mess around on Facebook, uh, so you can go look at some TikTok videos, uh, so you can go hang out in the club, uh, so you can go cheat on somebody. We got to get in here and get out today. Uh, everything's going to be all right. Uh, you still going to do, you still going to light the incense. You still going to light the incense. Don't worry about nothing. Uh, go on in now. Do your business. Uh, do it without any care. Hallelujah. You got thoughts uh, living on your mind uh, to make you want to come in and go out according to your time. Hallelujah. Nadab and Nabahu, the sons of Aaron, took either them his censor, took his life, and put fire therein. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And put incense thereon. Hallelujah. They, they went in there and they put their prayer life, uh, they put their devotion to God uh, before God, uh, and they offered strange fire. What is strange fire? Letters. Strange fire. Letters. Thoughts living on a person's mind. See, when they went in there, they had these thoughts. They had these thoughts on their head, what they was going to do, rather than giving God, hallelujah, all their heart, all their mind, and all their soul, when they went before God, they went before him with, I want to know how many times have you went before God with some strange fire because you had thoughts living on your mind because you still allowing Satan to cause you to write letters to yourself. They put fire incense thereon and offer strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. I'm going to tell you, God, God, and I already told you, do not come before me complaining. Don't come before me with an evil heart of unbelief. Don't come before me thinking that I can't do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think of me to do for you. Don't come before me with strange fire. Don't do that. Don't do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that went out fire from the Lord. See, that's what I'm trying to say. Do not come before the Lord with letters. Do not come before the Lord with thoughts living on your mind. Because what he's going to throw back at you is spirit. He's going to throw spirit back at you. And spirit always consumes thoughts. That is how the enemy is able to defeat you. Because the enemy says, Sister Anita, Deacon Stevenson, Brother Ware, Sister Erica, hallelujah, Sister Tanisha, Pastor Red, y'all wanna y'all wanna fight me with, with your thoughts and the devil like you ain't gonna get me. You ain't gonna get me. You need you need faith. You need faith to get me. You need spirit of God. You need spirit of God to defeat to defeat me. That went out fire from the Lord and devoured them. And they died before the Lord. Spiritual battle. Spirit, they, 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 they went before the Lord. They didn't understand that them letters, them thoughts living on their mind. They didn't understand that them thoughts was taking them. When, you, when they went into that tent. When they went into the tent. They had entered spiritual habitation. Do not enter in the spiritual habitation with a mindset of positive thoughts. They're going to die. They're going to die. But they, but they received, but for some unknown reason, they, they, they received the overnight express. They, 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 the Satan, the mailman, brought them the mail. They took the mail. They read the letter. They read the mail. And then they took the doggone information that they got from the mail, from the letter, and went into the tent and offered strange fire before the Lord. Watch this. Watch this. Because, because this is what this is what we should be offering before the Lord. 
Matthew chapter 2 and Luke chapter 2. The wise men. The wise men. When the wise men, when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, let's see how they go into the, let's see how they go before the Lord. Let's see how these guys go before the Lord. And going into the law, into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. And they fell down and worshipped him. They didn't, they didn't come in there with no false fire. They didn't come in there with no strange fire. They didn't come in there with thoughts living on their mind. All they did was came in there, fell down and worshipped him. That's what you got to do. I don't care. I don't care how much pressure how great the pressure is that the enemy is putting on your mind. You better do what these wise men did. You better go before them. You better go, you better go into the house of God, which is the Christ life. You better go before Christ. You better fall down. You better worship him. You better work. You better, you better not tell him. You better not go before him telling him the problem. Don't tell him the problem. Do not tell him the problem because he already know the problem. Yeah, and, 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 and he already knows the thoughts that they think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an example. He knows the thoughts he thinks towards you, but you don't know the thoughts he thinks towards you. All you need to know is that the thoughts he thinks towards you are good thoughts to give you an expected end, and you need to fall down and worship him for the thoughts that he thinks towards you. Because God don't give us thought, God give us word. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts. They didn't offer him strange fire. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, I know y'all. I know y'all. You know, guess how I know. Guess how I know y'all do not read your Bible. I'm going to tell you how I know y'all don't read y'all's Bible. Because cause, cause y'all listen to the dumb Catholic teaching. Yeah, I said, there you go. Goodbye. Goodbye to you too. Goodbye, because I know somebody finna leave. Goodbye to you too. I'm, I'm going to go. Goodbye. And thank you for joining me. Goodbye to you too. So, this is how I know y'all ain't reading y'all's Bible. Because the Catholic in the world will tell you that there were three wise men when you will find that nowhere written in scripture. You'll find that written nowhere in scripture. So if you're running around saying that there were three wise men, then you are living by a letter written by the Catholic Church pertaining to the birth of Jesus Christ. When the Bible tells us in, in Matthew chapter 2, it says wise men from the east. Luke chapter 2 said, calls them shepherds. And it does not tell us the amount. So, but, so what the dumb Catholic church does is they take the three gifts that these wise men brought and then they want to say it was three wise men. No, no, that's a lie. That's a lie. Because watch this, I'm finna teach you something. Because there, because there are millions of born again believers, and when we get together, all of us bring the same three gifts that these shepherds and these wise men brought. They they offered him gifts: gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold as a symbol of kingship on the earth. Frankincense, which is an incense. Here it is. Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of him his censer and put fire there and put incense there and of a strange fire before the kingship of the earth. Frankincense and incense as a symbol of divine nature on the earth. It is a symbol of divine nature on the earth. It is an aroma arising that symbolizes a person's faithful devotion to God. And myrrh. 
and embalming oil as a symbol of death on the earth. You think when that lady busted the alabaster box of oil and anointed Jesus for the burial, the doggone wise men had already given it to him too. Myrrh and embalming oil as a symbol of death on the earth. And y'all want to throw up at some stupid Christmas time, want to throw out a dumb nativity set because you follow the Catholic teaching. Bye. Goodbye to you. Don't worry about nothing. He'll, he'll tell you when you get on the other side, of, when you're no longer breathing and you get on the other side of the grave, he'll tell you, you'll hear it from his mouth since you don't want to believe it as I'm preaching it under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The reason why you and I are still losing spiritual battles in our daily lives is because our thinking is greater than our abiding confidence in Christ. Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. The power that worketh in us. The power working in us is the Holy Spirit. The power working in us should be the cross of Christ. The power working in us should be the nine aspects of the Spirit. Lord, help me to remember that nothing is going to happen that you and I together cannot handle. Even though my thoughts keep writing me letters every minute. Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and, and, and you know my rising up. You understand my thoughts are far off. You, you, you understand the, the, the thoughts that say do it. You, you understand the, the thoughts that say do it because 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 it was some thought that, that, that told Lot's wife, do it, do it, look back. That told Achan, do it, do it, take her the accursed thing. That told that told Cain, do it, do it, kill Abel. That told uh Jonah, do it, do it, get on the ship, go in the Tarsus, get on the ship. Uh, they told uh, Judas, do it, do it. Go and betray him for 30 pieces of silver. They told Samson, do it, do it. Tell her where your strength lies. You ain't gonna lose your half. They told the man of God from Judah, do it, do it. Go back to the false prophet's house and eat something. In the name of Jesus, they told Aaron and Miriam, do it, do it. Talk back to Moses. Uh, you got the same anointing Moses. God, talk back to him. They told him to do it, do it. The thought that told him to do it, do it. What thought is telling you to do it, do it? That's causing you to offer strange fire before the Lord. What thought is telling you to do it, do it? What thought is telling you as a married man to go out and commit adultery on your wife? What thought is telling you to do it, do it? What thought is telling you to tell a lie on that person that you know that that's a lie that you finna tell. What thought is telling you to do it, do it? You know, you ain't stupid. I'm telling you, you know, you know what you do. You know exactly what you do because you love to write letters to yourself. You read them letters. You read them old man letters. You read them old man letters who is corrupt after the deceitful lust of the flesh. And like Jesus says, you are uh, your father, the devil, and the works you will do because the devil loves to help us write letters in the name of Jesus. Oh, you know, you know, you know, you, you ain't stupid. You know them letters you be writing. 
You know, them letters, somebody say something to you that set you off, all of a sudden you start writing a letter in your head what you're going to say back to that person. Because you know that, because you know that, you, you won't, you, you won't, you won't throw the dog on ink pen away. You, 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 I don't know, I don't know why y'all, I don't know why y'all keep taking that ink pen from the devil, writing out stuff that you're going to say to somebody that ain't living the Christ life. You know, Lord, oh, you've searched me and known me. You know my sitting down. You, you, you know my rising up. Uh, you understand my thought of all the thought that says, do it, do it. Lord, you know it. Lord, you, you already know. You already know that doggone thought that, 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 that's sitting inside of me that's telling me to do it, do it. We have got to break free from the life of the old man. We got to break free from the life of the old man. How do we got to break free from saying it's the thought that counts? We got to break free from this, from saying it's the thought that counts. Reaping the fruit of your thoughts. You know what's wrong with you today? You've been, I'm going to tell you, you've been reaping the fruit of your thoughts. Galatians 6 and 7 says, Be not deceived whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. It's the thought that counts. We, we got to stop saying that. We got to stop saying that. Why? Because Jesus tells us something in Matthew 6 and 25 about thoughts. He says, take no thought for your life. Don't take no thought because if you take a thought, then you're going to be thought, then you're going to start writing letters. You're going to start writing letters. Take no thought for your life. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Is not the life greater than then whatever thought you can have is not the life. What life? The victorious Christ life, what, what Jesus Christ does the living in us. And if, Jesus, if you let Jesus Christ do the living in you, then you don't have to worry about thoughts living in a person's mind because then you will have the mind of Christ. That's what the Bible says. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who did not live by thoughts, but he lived by the will of God. The reason why. Yeah. Yeah, the reason why you, yeah, you and I as believers lose the spiritual battles in our daily lives is because them thoughts keep telling us to do it, do it. Thank you for joining me tonight. Oh, we got a part three. We're not done. God said we're going to lay on this series right here for a little bit. We're going to lay on this series because when this series ends, God wants to wipe out all of that. You thinking you got positive thoughts? You ain't got no positive thoughts. God want to wipe that out. God want to wipe out them lies about three wise men when it won three wise men god want to wipe out that thought that, that 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 you think that that you uh got it together when you don't hallelujah we know the thoughts living in our mind we know the thoughts living in our mind they the they, they the things they're the, th they're the things that make you weary when you've given it to God. Thoughts is the things that make you weary when you've given it to God. You know, when you, you know, it, it, it takes it takes me to I have to I have to keep reading in order for me to stay. I have to keep reading the Bible. I have to keep reading the Bible because I live in a world that's dominated by thoughts, amen? And so I have to keep reading the Bible so that I can keep uh, having a relationship 
with the word of God so that I won't do it, do it. When somebody does some stupid to me and the ones that I love. And just as soon as somebody does something to you or somebody that you love, the first thing you want to do is write a letter. All you want to do is write a letter. Thoughts living in your, in your head when somebody writes a letter. When, when the Bible already tells us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, the casting down of imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Y'all act like y'all ain't never heard that before. But no, not you. Though. You, uh, you. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. The next time your tail do it, do it. The next time you do it, I hope this message come up. I hope this. I hope God sends this message just as fast as lightning goes across the sky. I hope you hear this message. I hope you hear in the back of your head. I hope you hear me saying, "I told you your tail was gonna do it, do it. I knew you was gonna do it, do it." I knew you was going to do it, do it, because you won't allow the cross of Jesus Christ to do a deeper work in you until you're completely purged of every thought that that tree of the knowledge of good and evil has put inside of our sensor that God blew Adam and Eve into, that he blew Adam into for burning incense, for burning obedience before him. Prayers for the people. Hallelujah. I want to make sure that I continue to mention the names of the people that we're praying for. Brother Lamonte Roberson, Lee and Chris Deitches, Dexter Holloman. And if you got anybody else, I'm gonna tell you, I better you better say the name. You better say the name. You ain't gotta you ain't gotta say why we need to pray for them. You just need to give the name because God know God already knows why we need to pray for them. But if you want, if you want more than just Pastor Red, if you want more than just Pastor Red to be praying for you and your loved ones, then you got to tell me because I'll put it on the slide and then everybody in Christ Our Life Ministries and everybody that visits this telecast will see the names of the people that we won't pray for. I got you, Deacon Stevenson, your name. Uh, Thursday night, you'll see your name up here. You'll see your name up here. Hallelujah, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You, you, know, you, know, you know why y'all won't give me names? Y'all know why y'all? Because letters, letters, the, the letter, the letter won't let you tell me the name. Oh, Anita, I got you. Your name will be on here the next time because ain't nobody gonna, ain't nobody gonna know that Anita Benjamin needs prayer. Ain't nobody gonna know that Nathaniel Stevenson needs prayer if, because because I'm gonna tell you, people people look at my messages. I can see the count. I can see the count. Tanisha, God bless you. Your name will be on here. I'm put. I'm telling. Putting y'all's name on there. If I had to have a slide with just the, if, uh, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting on the next slide, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you every service. I don't care if I got a hundred names on there. I'm gonna say every name. I'm gonna say every name because you know you know why I'm gonna say every name because I'm and Sister Nita write their name so I can put it on there because I'm not gonna be in that Abinabahu. I'm not gonna be hasty when I go before the Lord. I'm gonna go before the Lord and I'm gonna talk to God about the names on these slides. And if you don't do nothing. When you go before God, if you don't do nothing, say, Lord, remember Lamonte Robertson. Lord God, remember Lee and Chris Deitches. 
Lord God, remember Dexter Holloman. Lord God, remember Nathaniel Stevenson. Lord God, remember Sister Anita Benjamin. Lord God, remember Tanisha Pratt. If you don't, God, I'm, I'm gonna tell you. God got it. God got it. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Anita. I promise you Devin's name will be on here and Cindy's name will be on here. I say I need to know these names because Pastor Red, Pastor Red, pray. Pastor Red, pray. And I'm going to, and these names are going to be set every day. And there is no overnight express mail that the enemy can give me that's going to be greater mail than these names. There's no overnight, there, there's nothing overnight he can give me that's going to cause me to focus on the overnight mail that's going to be greater than these names that y'all are giving Pastor Red. See, I say, Pastor, I need y'all to give me these names because I go before the Lord in prayer and, and I want to make sure, I want to make sure that, that, that I want to make sure that you know, I want to make sure that you know that every 24 hours, Enzo Davis, I got him, I got him. I need you to know that every 20, every 24 hours, God is hearing these names. Oh, I got him, Sister Tanisha. I'm gonna tell you, see, we're gonna, we're gonna have, I'm gonna tell you, I, I'm gonna go tonight. I'm gonna go tonight. I'm gonna, before I lay my head on the bed, I'm gonna take all these names, and then I'm gonna make my slide. Because we need, the saints need to be praying for one another. But if we don't know names, see, I like, I like names. I like to give God names. We can give God names in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Thank you for joining me tonight. I pray that you've been blessed by tonight's message. Thursday night, part three. We ain't God ain't done with y'all. God ain't done with y'all because we're we gonna we gonna get y'all gonna stop writing these doggone letters. Y'all gonna stop writing these letters. You're gonna start walking in the spirit, throwing these doggone ink pens that Satan is giving y'all. You know that I you know I done wrote three books. God has blessed me to write three books. You know, and, and, and so when I was getting ready to write my first book, I, I really didn't, I really didn't know how to, how to, how, how to, how to start. But then um, I was, I was my last duty station. So I went in to see my Sergeant Major. So when I went in there, the Sergeant Major, he had this, he had this, this ink pen on his desk and he had this, this thing that it was in and there was this, this plaque that was on there. And so the plaque says, there are a million thoughts in the mind of a man that he knows nothing about until he picks up his pen and begins to write. There are a million thoughts in the mind of a man that he knows nothing about until he picks up his pen and begins to write. And I was like, good God almighty. So I, my wife was still in Heidelberg, getting ready to come to the States. And I was by myself. So I, that weekend, I said, you know, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to put these thoughts on paper about this book. And I sat down that Friday night. And that Sunday, I had written 120 pages. And I said, that's the book. Friday, Saturday, then Sunday, I had taken 120 pages out of my head and put it in a Word document. And it became a book. Death and hell, the two places every believer needs to know about before they leave this planet.
the two places every human needs to know about before they leave planet Earth. Two days to write that book, The Name of Jesus. So, you got a million thoughts in your head. Whether or not they're word of God, meditating words, or whether they're thoughts that the old man has living on your mind, you know it. But there are a thousand of them, over a thousand of them. And the enemy is going to use every last one of them to drive you crazy when you are wanting God to move on your behalf. He's going to put an arsenal around you and the name of this arsenal is called Legion. Jesus asked the demon, he said, he said, what is your name? They said, we are Legion, but we are many. Where was they at? They was in that boy's mind. They was in that boy's mind. There was thoughts living in that boy's mind. They called themselves Legion. And every day, they would write a letter in this boy's mind and this boy would go out there and, and beat himself on the rocks and, and cut himself and, 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 and they thought he was a wild man. All because he had thoughts living in his mind. We gotta stop living by thoughts and start living by the word of God. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, thank you for this word. Thank you for my audience. Thank you for everybody that gave me a name to put on the prayer list in the name of Jesus. Lord, we need, we need, we need, we need wives' names. We need husbands' names. We need children's names. We need uncles' and aunts' names. We need supervisors' names. We need co-workers' names. We need church people's names. We need to be praying names. Because if we pray names, then the prayer will take us to an hour. Because we're not we're not praying we're not praying an hour. And you and you you told your disciples, could you not pray with me for one hour? If we if we had if we had the names of people, that that, that should take us to at least 30 minutes before we even think about praying selfishly for ourselves, God, the name of Jesus. Thank you for everybody that gave a name tonight. Thank you for everybody that's going to keep giving names. And I do my job as the pastor to put these names on the PowerPoint slide. And I'm going to read every name, every service. Because the name means something to somebody. And if it means something to somebody, then it means something to me in the name of Jesus. God, we love you. Thank you. Bless everybody that came to hear tonight's word. Lord God, we love you. And until we meet again, it's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining me tonight. I'll see you. I'll be with Pastor King tomorrow night. Then I'll be back before you Thursday night with part three of the reason why you, yet you and I, as believers, lose the spiritual battles in our daily lives. Thank you, Sister Anita. I got Jason. I got him. I got him. He will, he, I'm going to tell you, he'll be on, he will be on the slide in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Good night to everybody. Amen and amen.